In today's video, we're gonna check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. This is Nolan Arbaugh, and he's the first human being to test the Neuralink brain implant. Last month, they live streamed the nine minute video showing how the technology works, and it was fully functional. He was seen playing video games and explained that he was simply imagining the cursor moving, and it was doing so for him, using his mind, telepathic. The chip was inserted into his brain January 28th, and they said within a week, he was playing Mario Kart with his mind. Well, yesterday, things took a wild turn during live testing. With only four months of being chipped, complications begin to take place. The New York Times posted that Elon Musk's brain chip start to detach from Arbaugh's skull, causing a disconnection between the chip and the data. The Neuralink was just approved last year by the FDA. You know, personally, I believe that it's too soon. Personally, I don't believe we should have it at all, but the future is here. Are you willing to put a microchip connected to your brain receptors? Hey, tell me how y'all feel about it. Comment below and add me on YouTube. I'm dropping content at 100 subscribers. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. If you would have asked me when I was like 10, maybe even 15 years old, I would have been totally down to have a brain chip implanted into my head because I would have thought that it would have been like the future of being able to play video games and things like that. But now I couldn't even imagine it. That just, it just gives me the heebie-jeebies even thinking about it because one, there's so many security issues that I feel like could be breached. And two, it's always going to try to reject this device that's in your body and it's not in your body. So it's going to try to push it out. And that just sounds really uncomfortable. It's definitely not for me. The concept is cool and it's really sci-fi, but I don't like it. I don't know who needs to hear this, but like most of the people <laughs> that saw the Aurora Borealis in the South are liars. They're liars. Like, let me show you. My wife and I were about to go to bed when something like this hit our feed. Like someone in our town saw this and we're like, oh my gosh, we got to go. So we literally got our kids out of bed, put them in our car and started driving out of town to get away from the light pollution. We drove for an hour. We went up a mountain. And you could kind of tell the sky looked a little different, but it wasn't really that different. But we s continued seeing people pulling off and like staring at the sky or something. So we just eventually decided to pull off and the sky still looked normal. I promise you, it looked mostly normal, like maybe a little purplish hue. But when I took a picture of the iPhone, it looked like this and like this, like the, the iPhone took an amazing picture. But I didn't see this. My iPhone saw this and then I looked at the screen like you're looking at it now. Now, obviously, some people saw something that they probably had a better view or were up at a better time. But most of these people didn't see it. They saw their phone screen, which is what you're seeing. So you saw the same thing that I saw. Man, I'm really upset about that if that's the case because I also seen late at night that there was people taking pictures of the Aurora Borealis. And I'm really close to where these people were taking these so-called pictures near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So I stepped outside and I was trying to take the pictures. I was doing low aperture, slow aperture, all of the bells and whistles, and I was not getting this effect. And it really upsets me because I really wanted to see it. I've only seen, I've only seen Northern Lights one time in my life. I would have really liked to have seen these in person and have my wife see them as well. Did any of you guys get to see the Aurora Borealis? Because from what I've seen online, it looked really nice. The ethics of creating entities and labs. Are they human or not? Scientists are creating synthetic human embryos without eggs or sperm. Yikes. This is raising ethical and legal issues because lab-grown entities fall outside of current legislation. But what if I told you this has been going on for hundreds, if not thousands of years? In 1508, Spanish theologian Alonso Tostado tells us about the Arnaldian homunculus which predates its Paracelsian counterpart. In Tostado's In Librum Paradoxum, he writes, Arnaldus de Villanova, a most esteemed and skilled physician in experiments, did something similar with male semen in an artificially made vessel, preserving it for several days with certain transformative substances, aiding the formative power. And after several transformation over a few days, a human body was formed, albeit not perfectly organized. Villanova was a suspected adept in alchemy, who understood the dangers of such creations. Not wanting to tempt God, he would destroy these creatures. Modern day labs have 14 days by law to destroy lab grown embryos. As early as the 13th and 14th century, scholars have contemplated whether homunculi have souls or not. It's a pretty good question to ask if a lab grown human had a soul or not. 
I would consider them to probably have a soul if they were still made using DNA from another person. That simple aspect of it I really feel is what grants the soul of a person is shared DNA. Whether this DNA is from man or woman, there's still DNA involved. So that makes me believe that it would would contain a soul of some sort. What do you guys think? Do you think that lab-grown organisms like humans or animals, being that they were constructed in a lab, do you consider them to have a soul or not? Leave a comment down below letting me know because this is a pretty interesting topic. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed, thank you so much for being subscribed to the channel. And for the people that are not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of Questions for DK where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories, or theories in general, Leave a comment starting with question for DK so that I can find it in the YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. And to all the people out there that are mothers, have mothers, or have had mothers, happy Mother's Day. Hey, I swear I'm not trying to wreck, but bro, it is something in the fucking sky. What is that? What? Y'all seeing that shit, right? What is that? Man, it is never a good idea to record while you're driving. You could at least pull off of the road before you start recording like this. It looked like you were going really fast. To me, those look like Starlink satellites just trailing along, but they could also have been other forms of satellite, but I'm pretty certain that those were Starlink. So if anyone out there ever sees trails of lights like that, more than likely it's a Starlink satellite system. Not 100%. It could be something else. It could be other forms of satellite. It could be drones, but more than likely, Starlink satellites. That's my guess. If anyone has anything different to say, leave a comment down below letting me know. The internet was created by the American military in order to manage the American empire. It was created by DARPA in the 1960s in order to digitize and be able to quickly share within the military all of the social science research on foreign populations who were posing insurgency concerns to U.S. managed governments. In 1991, the World Wide Web rolls out. DARPA turns over the internet to the National Science Foundation and projects that through a bunch of universities to make it publicly available for commercial use. As soon as the internet came out, DARPA commissioned a program called Massive Digital Data Systems Program. And the Massive Digital Data Systems Program was a joint project of the NSA and the CIA. Part of this involved tracking search results through the early search engines that were created to be able to navigate this new internet. And this is where Google comes into the picture. In 1995, Larry Page and Sergey Brin are PhD students at Stanford. They had a DARPA grant to do this search engine aggregation work. They would then take this work to form a company called Google in 1998. Google quickly came out with very innovative product sets like Google Maps. They got Google Maps by purchasing the CIA's keyhole satellite software. It was the CIA's spy satellite software that is the only reason Google got Google Maps. I believe that the CIA has always been watching in every form of technology that we really get addicted to or enjoy. Probably even YouTube, to be honest. The CIA has always been watching. I hope this works. I want to be wrong. I've been getting comments and DMs nonstop about electroculture. So let's see what is up with these little rods. Electroculture is this new trend that's going around, and it is apparently the use of these copper wires on a rod or sticking into the soil, and it's supposed to increase the growth of your, in this case, is going to be figs. I've got six different varieties of figs, 12 figs total. We're going to do one with a copper rod and one without a copper rod. Put them in the exact same place, give them the exact same amount of water. We're not going to fertilize any of them for like an entire year. We're going to be using three-gallon pots just so we can give these enough room for growth. You know, I got these copper rods in here. They may grow 10 foot in a week. 
I ordered the rods on Amazon. They're quarter inch dowels with uh, some wire around them. They said this is 99.9% .9 copper. What I didn't know, they are wrapped around clockwise. We're in the northern hemisphere, so the wire must be wrapped clockwise. Magnetism, I guess, I don't know. We're gonna go ahead and put the pole, I mean, right next to it, I guess would be the best spot, right? An antenna for positive vibes and positive energy. Far does the metal have to go in? I, I don't know. I, it just has to be in, just has to be in. You know, if I can add some crystals, that would be even better. Maybe the next video, I'll have crystals. I'm really upset with myself. I have not been able to get my garden around this year, and I'm, I'm really disappointed because I was really hoping to get a nice, good garden going, but I haven't even started tomatoes or anything yet, so it's been really, really a downer. But I do like watching these types of videos because when I do start up my gardening, whether it be for fall or maybe next summer, I would like to try to implement this kind of resource. I've seen a lot of these dowel rods with copper wire on them help grow gardens. I've seen a lot of the organite pyramids placed in gardens and it really makes the garden really flourish. I'm curious to know if this actually works, so hopefully I can try it when I do get my garden set up. But until then, we're just going to have to find out on TikTok. Have any of you tried anything like this where you've put organite generators, copper wiring, or anything like that in your garden to help produce better yields? Let me know because I find this extremely cool. This is the weirdest scientific article I have ever read. A group of researchers trained mice to operate a virtual reality world with only their brains and it worked. We have long known that animals were able to make maps in their brains in order to navigate. Researchers here wanted to prove that they could actually navigate that space in their own heads in real time. What they first did is put the rats on a little spherical treadmill, so essentially they could run around in any direction that they wanted, and they had a virtual game space that they could go around and interact with. When they found a treat, they would then get rewards, and they also trained them to be able to pick up objects, move them through the game world, place them somewhere else in order to get a reward. They then mapped the rats at the campus and created a model in which the rats could operate on Using this map, they placed electrodes in the rat's brain that allowed them to activate those parts of the brain in order to control the game world. Then they placed the rat on a stationary field and continued to project the game world around them. In order to perform the tasks to get treats, they would have had to move in the game space using only their brains, and they could. They could also teleport using their brains in the game world. They knew where they wanted to go, got themselves there, grabbed an object, and went back with it for the treat. This tells us a few different things. First, animals just like us can navigate a three-dimensional world in their heads. I think this could also make video games very interesting and training modules, things like that. Perhaps it could also help us have a more immersive view when we're talking about things like space travel. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. You take your shoes off, maybe. Oh my god. Oh my god. Should I push you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Wait. Oh god. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh, I do not think that there's any amount of money that you could have offered me to do that, let alone my body be able to form that shape to fit in that hole. <laughs> Luckily, it was really shallow because that could have ended really nasty. The first portal on Earth actually just opened up yesterday. This is absolutely nuts. This right here is a new portal, which is absolutely insane. And already some people have been arrested for being idiots around this thing because, I mean, they probably haven't seen anything like it before. So if you don't know, the portal is this basically giant screen in a, you know, architectural structure, which is pretty damn cool. There's basically one in Dublin in Ireland. There's one in New York, and they link together with this, like, FaceTime that's happening on the screen. So people can just constantly interact, even with the time difference. Like, pretty sick. Now yesterday when this opened there was lots of processions and dance contests and lots of stuff happening between the two countries and yeah, it looked like a pretty cool event. There's a lot of footage coming out about this, people are loving it, saying how cool it is, although there isn't any audio, so one main problem is you can't hear anyone, you're just standing there waving, but I mean, I still think it's pretty unique. But of course there's always someone, and within literally two or three hours of the thing being open, someone was arrested, don't know what she was doing, but probably trying to jump through the portal, which of course isn't possible yet guys, I mean it might be, but, but not yet. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool, pretty unique. I'd love to see more of these opening up around the world, especially when you can jump through them. That'll be, yeah, 
a nice way to travel. You know, I actually think that that's pretty cool. It's a good way to look into another country or at least see what it's like in another city. It's a really interesting concept. It's kind of pointless, but it's really cool nonetheless. Have any of you seen these portals yet in person or have you only seen them online? Hey friends, when I do my videos about reincarnation, I always get a lot of comments from people saying things like, I don't want to come back, get me out of here, I hate it here, that kind of stuff. And I get this and this video is for you guys. Because when I was in my teens, I never thought I'd hit 20. When I was in my 20s, I really didn't think I would hit 30. And in my 30s, I basically died. And I had a near-death experience and I was reborn. Now I'm 44. I'm out here competing with high-level athletes. And, you know, instead of hating money, I'm coaching people how to make money. I lost 70 pounds. I cured all my diseases. And I have a completely different outlook on life. And the reason I'm doing this video is because I've learned a lot through my spiritual journey here. And I'm still at the very beginning of it, but I've learned a lot. One of the things I've learned is that we're not alone here. You have a whole team of people in the spirit world that are rooting for you, guiding you, watching you, and are a part of you. And in fact, you are out there too. This is just like a physical avatar that you use to navigate this material world. And you live this life and you do these things on behalf of your entire soul cluster and your whole soul family. So this isn't about you. So uh, one of the things that we learn here is to be service to others and to be selfless. And it's a very selfish thing to say, get me out of here. I don't want to be here because you choose chose to be here. And you have a lot of people out there watching you, helping you, and counting on you to make the most out of this life. So when things get crazy, because this world is freaking bananas, because it's supposed to be. It's an obstacle course. When it gets crazy, just remember that you have a lot of people out there watching you rooting for you and, and are a part of your mission. It's not just you. And you're just, you know, only one can come into this game per se. But there's a lot to you. And there's a whole team. And you don't want to let your team down and your soul family down. And also, you're going to, once you leave this simulation, this reality, and you go on the other side, um, and this has been proven by so many different people with past life regression, that you do a, a life review. And no one judges you. God doesn't judge you. No one judges you. You judge you. And you want to be proud of you. And whatever lessons you don't learn this go around, you have to come back and do it again. Because the only way you ascend up is to close all of your karmic loops and to learn all of your lessons and to finish all of your missions. So I understand that life can beat you down. And especially early in life, before you put the dots together, it really seems hopeless and like, why the fuck are we here? But I will tell you, it gets better. It gets easier. It makes more sense. Um, the goal is not to have a near-death experience and almost kill yourself like I did to realize all this stuff. Um, but life is beautiful and it is a gift. And a lot of souls don't get to incarnate. And um, I guarantee you there's at least 2 billion people on this planet right now that would trade places with you, no matter how bad you think your life is. So just a little morning pep talk. Um, because I don't want people to be hopeless. Um, this world is tough, but it's tough on purpose. It's a school. School's hard. The better the school, the harder it is. And um, just know you're not alone. And just know that you have a team. You are part of a bigger crew. And this is a mission. And you have to keep your head up. And you have to be positive. And you have to be willing to fight. And willing to endure. And willing to deal with all the bullshit in this world. Because it's not about you. It's about your whole team, your whole squad, your whole soul family. It's about all of y'all, okay? So just know that it's not about you. You have to think about it that way in bigger terms. And um, just know that this is for a purpose. This for, is for a reason, okay? This isn't just to torture us, <laughs> okay? Um, it's all leading somewhere. I guarantee you it is, okay? So stay strong, stay positive, and uh, love you guys. Have a beautiful weekend. Peace. I like this guy. He's got a lot of motivational content on TikTok. His username is I'm Alive and Kick. A link will be in the description if you're interested in any of his uh, videos. But very true statement. You know, even if you have a really horrible life, it could be worse. It could be a lot worse. So it is always good to try to remain on that positive note. Try to be on that high spirit because it is going to get better. And even if it seems bad right now, in the long run, it will be worth it. So just try to stay positive out there. What if I told you that I know exactly what the Grand Canyon is? Would you believe me? And I know exactly why it looks like petrified flesh and has all the signs of petrified living tissue.
And then I showed you what the veins of a bat's wing looks like and what the Grand Canyon looks like. And then I remind you or tell you for the very first time, if you haven't seen my dragon video, what I found right near that area. Look at this outlined in red wing, torso, and head, even down to its molars and jagged teeth. There's a dragon there, and the Grand Canyon is that dragon's petrified veins. Try to tell me I'm wrong. Try. Now to the uninitiated to my dragon post, go check it out. But quick recap, here is the whole dragon in red. I outlined it in blue. What I found later is the wing actually comes up and around and the head. Here's the head. They even call the mouth the Black Dragon Reservoir and Black Dragon Trailhead or a canyon. There is a dragon there. And the entire Grand Canyon is its petrified vein. And just so you can see the comparisons again. And yeah, the Grand Canyon, you can't explore all of it just like you can't explore Antarctica because there's all sorts of hidden things there that they don't want you to know about cultures that existed there that they don't want you to know existed there. But the bigger secret, the biggest secret of the Grand Canyon is what it actually is. And you try to tell me that's not the head of a giant dragon and that you're now looking at its neck and that this entire thing here is in its wing and its veins. Try to tell me. Try. Oh, and of course, I'm just joking. This is all for entertainment purposes. Just like to make you guys laugh. I mean... I kind of see the resemblance of the veins and the structure of it looking flesh-like. It does kind of look like a dragon when it's outlined, but without it being outlined, it's a really hard image to tell. And it is an odd coincidence that they do reference it as a dragon in the location. What do you guys think? Do you think that that could be a corpse of a dragon and the Grand Canyon is maybe the remains and or vein system of said dragon? I don't really see it. This is why you never paint a turtle show. Yeah, guys, you should never paint turtle shows. And this is something I'm sure most people don't know is very harmful to the turtle. Because as you can see, these cute little baby turtles end up looking like this when they get older. So for context, I came across this video on my For You page and it made me want to do some research as to why this happens. And you know when you see these baby turtles for sale, a lot of times you'll see them in souvenir shops. But the reason this is so harmful to turtles is because turtles actually use their shell to absorb sunlight. Most people might not know this, but turtle shells are not dead. They are actually a living organ that's a part of the turtle's body. And through the sunlight, the turtle shells actually gives them vitamin D that it desperately needs. And painting a turtle shell actually blocks this sunlight and it does not allow them to absorb any vitamin D. And this leads turtles to getting a very harmful bone disease. So yeah guys, you should definitely never paint a turtle shell. Dang, that's really sad. I've actually seen turtles with painted shells in the past. Not anything recent, but that is really sad. The person that's painting their shells should be notified that, hey, that's not going to end well for that turtle if it remains painted like that. That just looks awful. You know, I've been living here a minute. There's probably eight or ten cows clustered. I, I thought it was weird the other day, but like... I mean... It's not even hot here yet. It's not even hot. Look at them all. And the babies are under the back tree. Look at them. That's some weird as fuck behavior. You know, seeing this video actually brings up a point there's some cows down the road from where I live that are always spread out in the field, always grazing on grass, even when it's really hot. But not just because there's shade here. 
I think that they're just hurtling up together because that's what the cows here in my area have been doing. They're all staying clutched together really, really tight. And that's kind of strange behavior for these cows unless major storms are coming. Whenever a major storm comes, cows will herd together. And that's kind of how they're herding in my area as if there's a major storm coming. It is really concerning. These are meridian ley lines. This is an energy line on the body, right? It goes right down here and it goes right connected into here. So if you wear, for example, a ring here and a bracelet here, this is connected to this and it sinks. Kings and queens, right? Very easy example. What are they always wearing? They wear a crown. And that crown is made out of gold, which is a conductor. And they also have quartz and all different types of jewelry on that crown, which is also conducting and amplifying that energy. And usually they're wearing purple to try to show that they're royal. That all is connected on the head, right? Because your head is connected to your crown chakra, which is your highest state of consciousness. So they wear those crowns. A lot of ancient cultures, they used to be decked out. They had bones, they had quartz, they had amethyst, they have topaz, they had all these beautiful things all over their body. And they would wear that, they would be able to sync up to a higher consciousness because the fact that their body is resonating at an amplified field. I've had this video for a while, but I've been scared to post it because what they might do to me. Um, I usually post at least once a month. So if I don't see, any, uh, or if you don't see any posts from me, you know that I, they got to me. But um, I was at the museum and I saw this uh, where this Egyptian artifact where everything that was that we're meant to see is all properly intact and any details that we're not meant to see was chiseled off. Um, now, if you notice any regular human being, uh, birds, boats, things like that, all properly intact and uh, in perfectly good condition, the regular human being right there. Now, if you uh, look beside it, there's a much larger being. You can see the feet, the legs and uh, the body. Everything was chiseled off and you can see the head is like a, lizard sh shape or crocodile shape or whatever and any details about it was chiseled off so they're hiding our history from us i don't know who they are but um if i'm onto something <laughs> they might come after me um so uh if you know the, any detail about this uh maybe you can comment or stitch this video and explain but uh as you can see it, clearly everything that we we're meant to see was properly intact and anything that we're not meant to see we're all chiseled off by i don't know who any details about it like you can see the regular things all there but the other stuff that we're not meant to see we're all chiseled off wow that actually did look like it was chipped away at and it does make me wonder maybe there was more information on some of those slabs that archaeologists or scientists were like yeah let's not let people see that side of the story for all we know where it's chiseled away at there could be instructions on why the pyramids were built and exactly how they were functioned and not just some tombs for pharaohs hey he might actually be onto something hi i'm back to make some more connections for you when we look at the eye of osiris what i see is a snake with its jaw open and the tongue sticking out just like below it's more symbology for the reptilians when we look at some of the Egyptian gods or goddesses, for example, Ra or Isis, what we see on top of their heads, for example, Ra, we have the snake and we're told it's the sun because he's the sun god. But what I see is the snake with a swallowed egg. When we look at Isis on top of her head, we have the incubation of the snake egg. What you're really seeing here is the mother and the father of the reptilian race. When we look at the Egyptian goddess Isis, she's depicted in many different ways. Sometimes she has the uh, incubated snake's egg on her head and sometimes she has a throne. Coincidentally, the name Isis does mean throne in Greek. I feel that the depictions were different because at this point Isis would have been pregnant. She would have been carrying the reptilian egg. Let's make another connection. As I've said before, the names of the forefathers were coded. We have Ra in the middle of the name Abraham, and we also have Isis across two other names, which is also a dedication. As I stated before, the name Israel, which replaced Jacob, is also a code. So you have is representative of 
Isis and also Isaac and Ishmael. You have Ra for the god Ra and also Abraham. And you also have El, which was put on the end, meaning the enlightened ones. Let's make another connection. This is Serpent Mound in Ohio of America. When we look at the depiction, we can see the coiled snake swallowing an egg. The tail is in the west and the face is in the east. We're often told that the structure is facing east because it's supposed to be a depiction of the snake swallowing the sun. But I think it's really linked to Egypt, Ra, Isis and the Four Fathers. When we look at the snake, we can see four kinks in its tail, representative of the Four Fathers. If we count the kinks alternately, we get seven for the seven pyramids of Egypt. It's also facing the east towards Egypt. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with more connections. What is done in darkness will come to the light. So uh, billionaires did not want us to have this technology because they do. it was going to remove the middlemen in our world. And that's where they get most of their 1%. Like uh, governments, oil industry, medical industry. Yeah, they do. And they didn't create this technology either because this technology creates a better world, a more equitable world. And they don't, they don't really do stuff like that. They uh, lie, steal, cheat, manipulate, um, and they need these centralized things to get 1%. They're the middlemen. We don't need middlemen. We can transact with each other. And because the middlemen held so much power, they kept prices high. This is going to, we're going to start to really even out our world now. Who would have thought? We're going back to 50 cent cheeseburgers, and I'm not lying about that. The time is 3.03 a.m., we're going back to 50 cent cheeseburgers and I didn't make that up. It's we're t going to be going into a tokenized economy and eventually that gets us to exchange micro amounts. Just instant uh, transacting and exchanging value. But no, people like Elon Musk, which is buddies with those guys, he goes around and says, hey, what you making there? Buys it up, keeps it, keeps it down like Tesla. He took a shit on Tesla. And uh, Elon wanted to be into, what's he doing to, with Twitter? Looking like he's doing good guy stuff, but he was trying to control media. He's a sneaky one. He's a sneaky little rascal. But yeah, that's how they work. They buy our technology that we're doing. Oh, by the way, Elon didn't create tech Tesla. He just bought it. He's not the original inventor. Also, Elon's not smart. He thinks Elon's not smart. And also, a more equitable world means no more wealth income inequality. They need that. They're the, they're the ones at the top, and we're the ones below. And they need that, not so much for the money. Hear this. They need it for the power and control. They need the money to be top-heavy on to them, not because of money, but because it makes them feel powerful. And only deeply insecure, lower conscious human beings do this kind of shit. It's funny because you think they're all that, they're lower conscious. We're more evolved. And that's why we should be the ones making the decisions. And our world's going to get way faster. Not with lower conscious psycho tyrants in charge. What the f*** is that? Alright, so one of my good buddies that lives up in Georgia, somewhere in this area... He sent me this really weird video last night. He was having a crazy lightning storm and tornado warnings, so he went outside to film some of it, and at first he caught this. A little orb kind of floating around in a weird way. We've all seen weird stuff like that before. Nothing too crazy, right? But then he went outside a few minutes later, and he caught this. Are you kidding me right now? I need to go back out and film some more. What the f*** is going on? There's no way it's water because it would just run down all the way, right? Like. What the f*** is going on? Oh boy. So he was filming this from an iPhone 13. He was outside. There was no window in front of him to create any kind of reflection like that. He wiped his lens on his phone to make sure it wasn't water droplets. But man, this is super weird. Have you ever seen anything like this? Almost kind of looks like maybe angel wings. You know what else it kind of looks like? It actually looks a lot closer to the bat signal than it does to angel wings. What if it's some kind of UFO that's normally invisible, but it's being exposed because of the lightning storm? Or is it just something on the camera lens causing this optical illusion? I even went on Google to see if anyone else was talking about it or if anyone else saw it. But the last article talking about weird lights in the sky over that area 
was from July of last year. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was just Starlink. I've personally known this guy for over 20 years. And trust me, he's not the type of guy to make stuff up like this. If anything, he's usually the guy that will make fun of people who are claiming to see stuff like this. So this is really tripping me out. I don't know what to think, guys. This thing is crazy looking. And if any of you guys were in that area and saw it, drop a comment below. You know, the little orb thing, I was thinking, you know, that could be like a little moth or some kind of bug or something flying around. But the thing that looks like a hung up set of sheets, I really don't know what that could have been. That looked like a solid mass just up in the sky. I don't know if it was a reflection off of whatever was in the house that the person was recording from or if there was something out there in the sky, because that definitely looks strange. Do any of you have any idea what that could have been? Do you have any information, or were you there to witness this yourself? Because that was pretty weird looking. It is no secret that the Vatican is suspicious as shit, but why they built an audience hall in the shape of a snake's head, that's a secret. But I have a theory, and let's talk about it. Starting with the outside of the building, this is what you would see if you were a bird looking down on it. Looks like a snake's head, doesn't it? It's got two eyes on the side, got a little bit of a curve to it. Let's go inside. The windows inside this place are made up of stained glass, and they are arranged in such a pattern that they look like the pupil of a snake. Here, look. I'm sorry, but I see some similarities. What about you? Here's where I'm a while out for just a second. Stick with me. This is if you were a bird looking down on the Vatican. What does that look like? That looks like a snake's head to me with some snake eyes and everything. And then you move on down and you've got a round circle in the middle of it, like a snake that just swallowed something whole. Here's the thing about that. In the middle of this fucking circle, there is an obelisk. Now, some people theorize that ancient Egyptians used the obelisk to absorb energy as an energy source and transmit it to other places like pyramids or domes. And then you have the snake's tail in the back. Now, real quick, before I go, I'm going to show you what a snake looks like when it swallowed something whole. Now tell me that building wasn't designed in the form of a snake. I'm not going to lie. The Vatican definitely is very sinister looking and it does resemble a snake. I'm not trying to bad mouth or put a bad name on the Vatican. They could be very respectable people for all I know. But it looks to me like they're just trying to slap us in the face with obvious symbolism you know you would just think that an ultimate holy place would dedicate themselves to making their surroundings more holy looking in a righteous way and not in a way that looks evil but maybe to them good is a form of something that looks evil it's just very odd to me i do not trust the vatican personally maybe they do mean well let's go into this again open this and paint there we go now we mark the other side, right? Zoom a little bit, get a, a little bit closer. We're going to take the other side, the left side, right? So delete the right side, mark the left side, copy and paste it in. Flip it over, mirror it to the horizontal. Stitch this together. There we go. Open this and keep it's loading. There we go. Now open, wasn't it? Yeah, here we are. Decrease the brightness. and increase the contrast. There we go. That's the other half of the planet T minus. All of those images are created in Photoshop. Okay. So this is on purpose. I see a lot of these videos on TikTok where people are taking images of the earth splitting them and reversing them just like this one did and showing different evil looking faces or different designs in the earth and i think it's pretty cool but i don't think that that's something intentionally done by these master manipulators i feel like that would be way too obvious and people would figure that out way too quick. I honestly think that a lot of these are just purely coincidental. I could be wrong on that because some of them are really good looking as far as like, dang, there's an actual demon face right there. <laughs> At this point, I'm 100% convinced the U.S. government is trying to kill and poison us through food.
Would anybody like to explain to me why no major news outlet is speaking about the fact that there are 16,000 pounds of ground beef in Walmart that have been recalled for E. coli? Yeah, and Walmart was just planning to release their own brand of food. I think the fuck not. So this article was originally published May 1st yesterday and was just updated as of 10.58 a.m., which is literally only a couple minutes ago. And it says Walmart ground beef recall for potential E. coli contamination, 16,000 pounds affected. The U.S. Department of Agriculture announced Wednesday that over 16,000 pounds of ground beef has been recalled over E. coli contamination. Carajel Meat Products recalled ground beef packages with an established ID and it shows the number that is on all the ground beef that's contaminated and it was produced between April 26th and the 28th so this is a recent production of ground beef let's start there then it says the packages which do not have the cardinal brand on its top packaging had been shipped to Walmart stores across the country. They are saying consumers with the effective packages are advised to throw them away or return them to the point of purchase. If you are showing signs of E. coli poisoning, you are advised to immediately seek medical attention. And be clear, they are investigating a multi-state outbreak. With everything that is going on with our dairy and now this, I really think the U.S. government is trying to trying to off us. It's like, since they can't control us, they rather poison our food. If you needed a better reason to go vegan, I guess I'm gonna have to go vegan too. I don't know if I would say that they're intentionally trying to poison us, because if they were intentionally trying to poison us, they would not make us aware of the poisonings that are happening. They would just let the E. coli and everything in the ground beef just go and let people get sick off of it and go to the doctors and, and pay for medical expenses. So I really do not think that they're out there purposely trying to get us deathly ill. I just think that we live in a society where we have a lot of mistreated warehouses where they're not properly doing the things to keep meat and other produce clean. And not to mention that stores that are storing these products probably aren't properly storing them either but it all boils down to the factories where these meats are processed they probably just really aren't keeping the factories as clean as they need to be and that's what's happening but it's definitely not out of the question that there is probably some organizations out there that are really trying to harm us in the way of ending our lives but in this case i really don't think that it's that i just think that companies aren't keeping their warehouses and, and workplaces clean all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and end this video here i'm really sorry that yesterday i did not have a video i was trying to get my camera situated and it was just giving me a really hard time i do not fully have it set up yet but right now it'll work i just have it plugged in at its mid setting i'm hoping to get it to where i can get it at really good high quality so it looks decent but i should be back the ball should be rolling i should not be taking any more time off of youtube again i'm really sorry about that and like i said earlier in the video happy mother's day to everyone out there that's a mother has a mother or had a mother everyone deserves a good happy mother's day even if you're not a mom and as always if you enjoyed any of these clips links are in the description down below and with that being said have a good day